of communion at this time. Let me just establish this fact that scripture teaches us that as often as we reenact what Jesus did with his disciples, as often as we do it, we're doing it unto God in recognition of what he did to all of us or for all of us. We know that God sending his son to the earth is to redeem us, is to bring us back into fellowship because all of us sinned and we fell short of God's glory. We were disconnected from God. We lost our way. That's human nature. Sin entered the world through disobedience. Because I don't care who you are, including the preacher, we have a tendency to waver and go in the opposite direction to the Word of God. And therefore, it is our responsibility to embrace the free gift of salvation, the free gift of coming into alignment with God, to accept His gift of love to us. So what Jesus did that night, that he had the last supper with his disciples before he was crucified, he demonstrated something that we are practicing often in modern time. He took what was already on the table because they were having a feast. It was Passover. And he used what was on the table to demonstrate a spiritual principle. And I don't want you to miss this. He took the bread and he took the cup that was filled with wine. And the Bible says he blessed it and he gave the bread to his disciples and he said, I want you to eat it it represents his body. Now remember, this was just before he was going to be crucified. He said, I want you to break and take your piece, and then I want you to eat it. It represents my body. Why would Jesus do that? Why would he want to leave such a lasting impression on the disciples by saying to them, okay, here's bread, I'm going to equate it to my body. Eat it. Wow. Take me from the physical. Put me inside of you where people can't see. And I want you to fellowship with me. Take me out of the physical, put me on the inside of you. And then he did something that blew my mind when he took the cup that was filled with wine and then he said, this is now the cup, the blood, the blood of the new covenant. Well, Life is in the blood. You can have a human body, but if there's no blood flowing through, that person has no life in them. So he says, take me bread, eat me, make me a part of your inside. Don't just show me on the outside. Don't just say you are a follower of me and act like a follower of me to impress people. What matters the most to me, it's when I am working on the inside of you. And then he says, drink life that's in the blood. Drink what I am about to pour out of me. Eat bread, put it in you. Now drink the wine, my blood, that I'm going to pour out of me. It is from that blood, 
every person will have an opportunity at the cross. Every person will have an opportunity to connect to the cross. And this is the reason why he says, as often as you do this, remember you're doing it to remember what I did for you. This is why I don't understand why people reject Christ. I really can't understand it because at the end of the day, who else have shown such love? What other God, what other religion, whatever, whatever, what other movement have demonstrated to you that he was willing to allow his body to be punctured, broken, flesh to be cut, crown of thorn to be placed on his head to puncture his flesh so that blood would flow. A puncture in his side would allow blood to flow and he takes all of that and sends a spiritual message to his body and say, I did it all just for you. Think about that. Think about that. Why would you walk away from that? Why would you turn to some other dead religion? Why would you even want to take the risk of saying there is no God? Then what other choice do you have? Think about that. What other choice do you have? To reject a God who paid it all and brought you back into fellowship with the Father, why would you reject him? Why? That's why every time I'm in a setting like this, and for those of you streaming, and I get an opportunity to reenact what he did, I seize the moment. Why? Because once again, just like how Jesus went to a wedding in Canyon of Galilee and turned water into wine, just like how Jesus worked miracles where he told Moses, throw your rod down, it became a serpent. The very same miraculous work and power of Jesus will turn whatever you're holding into your hand into exactly what he wants it to be. The bread that you're about to eat, please do not believe it is ordinary crackers or bread. The, the, the juice that you're about to drink, I don't even care if you take a bottle of liquor right now and you have it in your hand. The moment you pray, That's the power of prayer. Why did Jesus, before he gave it to his disciples, prayed? Think about that. It was a principle to show us the power of prayer that the moment you pray over a thing, it changes to what you're praying for. So get ready, you're about to eat of the body of Christ. You're about to drink of his blood once again. And you may ask the question, Henry, why is that important now? Why would I want to, in the 21st century, eat of the body of Christ and at the same time turn around and want to drink blood? Why would I want to do that? Well, do you know how the story ended? <laughs> do you know how the story ended? That the same man who told the disciples to do all those things in three days after he went through the process for which he came came up out of the grave and today is living testimony that Jesus lives I wonder who will partake of communion today and in just a matter of hours or days God can flip the script on your life that God can take every dead situation Come on now, 
and breathe life into it. I, I don't know who I'm talking to as you're streaming. I wonder those of you who will believe the power of what you're holding in your hands, what God can do in your life. And I don't know if you're expecting God to do a miracle this morning, but I'm telling you miracles are released right now as we are worshiping God. If you dare to trust God, I dare you to believe God changed my situation. God transitioned me from the old into the new. Do something new in me. If you believe that, it will take place in your life. I want to read this and then I will pray with you. Here's something that the Lord dropped into my spirit as of yesterday. Yesterday was the first day of October. We're now in the fourth quarter. This quarter determines who's the winner. Oh, somebody better grab a hold of this. I feel my help up in here today. I said this quarter determines the winner. The first quarter doesn't, the second, the third quarter. You cannot predict the winner. Come on now, in the first to the third quarter. Come on now, last week I didn't believe the dolphin was going to win. Talk to me here now. Because the first, second, and third quarter, they weren't really playing good, but the fourth quarter determines the winner. I just believe God sent me here this morning to tell somebody you're in the fourth quarter and this is your winning play. This is what you're going to have to embrace and receive. This is your season. This is your moment to win because you're in the fourth quarter. So here's what he told me to tell you and I wrote it down because I don't want to miss it. He said, I want you to tell the people that they have now entered, watch this, catch this one word he gave me and I had to look up the word. He says, tell the people they have now entered into a season of alignment. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying, those of you are streaming? God says you have entered into a season of alignment. He blew my mind when he said that to me. Do me, can, can somebody remove this podium for me? Can, can someone, someone remove this? Ed, Eddie, come and remove this podium for me. Move this podium. Come, come here, Eddie, I need you, I need you. Come here, um, Natasha, come here. Um, Rochelle, come here, three of you. I want you to stand right here. Turn, turn to the people. Come here, stand right here. Come here, you stand right here. The moment the Lord told me that, that this is a season of alignment, this image came before me. Can I have my paper that was on the uh, podium? There's, there's, a note. there's notes on there that I've got to give it to you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, uh, Thank you, thank you so much. So when I look up the word alignment, it says arrangement in a straight line. Don't miss God. For those of you who are streaming, make sure the camera is on the center here because I'm about to show them something here. It says arrangement in a straight line or in correct or appropriate relative positions. So God is revealing to us the last quarter which determines who win. He's saying you have to get in alignment. You have to get in alignment because watch this, God has the last word over every area of your life. Listen to me, the enemy that you're fighting is not facing you. That's why the battle is not yours. Only a few people receive this. But the enemy that stands before you, the person they're really seeing right now is God. You think it's you. It's God. God is before that person right now. God's before those forces of darkness that you're fighting right now. So God 
who is invisible, you can't see him, now prepares a way for you to have his provision. He sends to you the son. That's why we're going to reenact what he, the son did for all of us. And every time the enemy comes and give God a reason for, for him not to bless you, a reason for you not to have the breakthrough, a reason for you not to prosper, a reason for you not to see the good of the land, the son reminds the father. it all for them. Come on now. The bill has been paid in full. Somebody ought to give God a praise up in here today. And even at that point, the son understands his responsibility. Now, what God is saying, not only did I give you my son to pave the way so that you can re always remember the sacrifice that I made to redeem you. I've now given you in person right now the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Who will always guide you into all truth. Here's how you're going to win the next quarter or the next three months of this year. Some of you are out of alignment. That's why you have been attacked. That's why you're not seeing the victory. That's why you're not overcoming. It's because you're not in alignment. Make sure the camera is on them now. You're not in alignment. You're not in alignment. You are out of alignment. So you become the target. The devil is shooting. Come on, you become the target. You're not in alignment. But honey, if you ever get in alignment, if you ever get in alignment, I'm not talking about getting out of alignment. Get in alignment. Hit somebody and tell them, get in alignment. Get in alignment. Get with the flow of God. 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 I don't care what's happening in your life. Get with the flow of God. If God is flowing, I want to flow with Him. Where God is, I want to be there also. Somebody ought to give God a praise up in here today. Woo! Do me a favor. Do me a favor. I want somebody to shout it out. I'm in alignment. Come on, shout it out again. I'm in alignment. You got to stay. Watch this. In alignment. If they have the cameras in the right position. Notice, look on the screen. You can't see me. <laughs> Lord, I'm about to dance out of my clothes this morning. Come on, look at the camera. Look at the screen for those of you who are here. You cannot see me. God is saying the season that you're about to enter in, if you come in alignment with him, he'll protect you from the darts of the enemy. Ah, oh, somebody didn't get that right now. If you come in alignment with his word, it is going to set you up for 2023. Only 10 people received that. Only 10 people received it. Come in alignment. I don't know who this is for. You can throw it away and say you don't care about it. It makes no difference. This man crazy. You can say all what you want to say. But come January 1, 2023, you all going to find out God spoke in this house today, warning us to come in alignment because there's some stuff coming. You're not going to get protected if you're out 
of alignment. Don't try to get in front of the Holy Spirit. Don't ignore the sacrifice of Jesus. And don't you dare think that you are bigger than God. Tell somebody, I know my place. I know my place. Tell somebody again, I know my place. I'm going to stick with God because that's where my breakthrough is at. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Be seated, be seated. We're trying to have communion. feel what I'm feeling man something is happening in the atmosphere I said there's a shift in the atmosphere God has just revealed to us come on now as long as we stay in our place we are protected somebody ought to give them a praise in this house hallelujah If you can, you may be seated. What you are about to do will set the trajectory of the next three months of your life. If I am truly a man of God, Watch what's going to happen. <laughs> what's about to happen, some people will consider it as flood, but some consider it as rain. There's a difference. Flood versus rain. But when you're in alignment, 
you have the proper perspective. Get in alignment. On Friday, I couldn't contain it. I had to write it all down. John 16, 33. I even have a scripture that the Lord gave me. I just gave it to them this morning. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me, me, you may have peace. Careful what you give attention to. You listen to the wrong people, wrong vibes, you're going to throw yourself off. You're going to mess your life up. When you're not in tune with the Spirit, Jesus said, uh, John said, I told you in me. You may have peace. In the world, it's full of trouble. Oh, we see it all around us now. And you think more trouble ain't coming? <laughs> but I love it. But he says, take heart. In other words, don't fret. When you're in alignment, you don't need to fret. Cause Anything that the devil send your way, it got to go to, through God first, it got to go through Jesus, it got to go through the Holy Spirit before it hits you. And last time I checked, ain't nothing bad enough can get through to God to get you in the end. That's how strong and powerful and confident you are to walk around every day that you've got peace. Peace. Oh, peace. Oh, somebody need to hear that again. Peace. Stop worrying yourself. Just walk in God's peace. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Everything. Don't worry about a thing because every little thing Oh my God, my God. Even Bob Marley was prophetic. Every little thing gonna be all right. You ought to get up Monday morning when all hell breaks loose in your life and said, I'm not worried about a thing because I know there's a prophetic word that God spoke over my life and every little thing gonna be all right. Gonna be all right. There's a sister in this building. There's a brother that's screaming. Need to hear this. Stop worrying about things. Every little thing. As long as you're in alignment, everything is going to be all right. God's got you. God's got your family. God's got that health issue under control. God's got your finances under control. Everything. Stop worrying yourself. Chill out. Chill out. Be at peace, be at peace, be at peace. God's got your back. Whew. And he says you can have the peace even in a world that's full of trouble because I've overcome the world. I've overcome the world. Father, we lift our sacraments to you. We know the power behind it. Therefore, this morning, all around the world, as people are streaming, people are on campus. We're not quite sure what you're up to, but we do know you're up to something. And anything that you're doing, please, Lord, don't do it without us. Whatever you're doing 
in the United States of America, please don't do it without us. Whatever you're doing in our cities, please don't do it without us. Whatever you're doing in the body of Christ, please include the faith center in it, God. Please, God, include us because we know that once we're in alignment with your word, your word will back us. So today, we thank you that we once again can partake of your body, that we can drink of your blood, and our lives will never ever be the same again. We dedicate this moment unto you, and we're at peace that you've got us. We're at peace that the blood still works. And we give you praise in Jesus' name, amen. I want you to take whatever represents the bread. It is now the body of Christ. Let's eat. Let's take whatever represents the New Testament as blood and let's drink all of it.
Amen. When I tell you the next three months is very crucial to all of us, you ought to take it seriously and come in alignment. When you come in alignment, that's where miracles flow. That's where God then can pour his blessings in your life. Last week at the end of the service, we did a prayer service that we recorded and two miracles took place. Those of you were there, two miracles. You may think that God is not a God of miracles in the 21st century, you missed it. First miracle that took place, a woman um, came up in the prayer service. I gave them an opportunity to share their testimonies and pretty much act, actually it was a moment to tell us what you want us to pray with you about. That was the whole cause of it. And one lady came down broken. I don't know if she's here today, you can wave your hands. But she came down broken and she started sharing how she has her mortgage to pay, bills, and she was very worried about her finances and so forth. And she's out of a job and she needs a job. And, and therefore she said, my name is Sandra. Don't miss this, my name is Sandra. I work in human resources and I'd love to get a job. Would you pray that God will give, us, give me a job? And if you flow in the prophetic, if you ever let God use you, listen to me, whenever you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, notice what I said, when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you are not responsible for what you say, whether people believe it or not. When God speaks through you, ignore people. And the moment she said it, I didn't know why I said it. It just came out of me. I says, I'm believing that in 24 hours you can get a job. How many of you were there last week? Okay. I said, I believe in 24 hours you're going to get a job. I just, I don't know why I said it. Don't know the lady. I have no reason to say it. I'm not trying to prov prove anything. And I says, in 24 hours you're going to get a job. And we prayed for her. There were other people standing in line to come down. Then a lady, first of all, when the lady told her name, my name is Sandra, one lady sitting over there screamed out. Nobody knows why she was screaming. It sounds like she was disrupting. That's why you got to be careful. I, I'm sensitive. I know when people are disrupting a service. But then there were some cries. There's some people, when you see them scream out, leave them alone. You have no idea what that expression is all about. And she screamed up. Anyway, she, it was her turn. She came down. She introduced herself. Pay attention. She introduced herself. She said, my name is Sandra. I'm a business owner. I'm having problems on my job, on my business. I have somebody who just left me. And I need a human resource personnel. Y'all remember that? Ah! I need a human resource personnel to help me. Sandra, the other Sandra who was looking for a job said, and I am a recruiter. I said, you both get together. God already answered your prayers. The second miracle that took place, a lady came down and she was saying, you know, I want to thank God that God restored my marriage. God healed my relationship. And she was encouraging people and just say, please pray for my marriage. The very next person who took the microphone cried out and said, I am a few months pregnant. I have a child and my husband just left me. I don't know what to do. The girl who testified that God restored her marriage was about halfway there. I said, where are you going? Come back here. Because it was a setup. 
I said, I want you to go over to this young lady and I want, and I gave her the mic. I said, I want you to pray for this young lady. And boy, did she pray. What are you saying? Had these two ladies, what? Don't miss your God moment. Had these two ladies not been in the, this was after church, not been in service, not made their way out to church, not decided to stay and be a part of the prayer service. The will of God would not have taken place. I wonder this morning, I'm going somewhere with this, I wonder this morning who is in this room, who is streaming, that the reason why things are not falling in a domino effect is because you're out of line. You're not in alignment. You're not at the right place, at the right time, doing the right things. And all God is saying to you right now, you really want to see prayers answered? You want to see miracles? Get in alignment. If that's you, I want to see some more Sandras. I want to see some more homes being healed. If that's you, I feel there's a breaking right now. I want you to rush down this altar. We're going to pray with you because I believe the next three months of your life, come on, will never ever be the same again. Come on now, those of you who are streaming, I want you to go ahead and say, please pray for me, please pray for me, put your name down. Come on, as these people are coming, stay right there, worshipers, I need you. I need for you to indicate right now that you want to be prayed over. Come on, don't miss this. Don't you dare miss God, come on. I want you to blow up the internet by saying, please pray for me, I'm John. Pray for me, I'm Beverly, I'm Sandra, I'm Susie. Pray for me, I want to include you in this prayer. Come on, squeeze yourself, come on. Do, do as, come as close as possible. Let's get as many of you close as possible. I'm telling you, God is still working miracles. Singers, I'm waiting on you. God is still working miracles. You just got to believe his word. Make your way down. Make your way down. Make your way down. Come on, sing it, sing it, sing it. Sing it.
Now listen to me. I, I really don't know if all of you are taking in what's happening right now. It'll be very sad if you casually receive the moment. When I tell you, since October 1st, please catch this. When I tell you, God literally looked down on earth October 1st and started pointing. And if you're in alignment, everything that he's ordained got to hit your address. <laughs> Come on now. It's like a satellite. If the satellite is not positioned correctly, it can't receive. It's not able to receive, sir. But if your heart is positioned correctly, I don't care what you have lost over the few years. God has a unique way, like Job, to return everything and much more back into your life. Are you receiving that this morning? So you got to make sure you get an alignment. It's October. We got a whole month to go. We got November and December. We got to set everything up for 2023. Because I'm telling you, the devil sees what's coming in 23. And he's going to turn up the heat. He's going to do everything to get you frustrated. He's going to get everything to knock you out of alignment. But baby, you got to stay focused because your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Neither have it entered into your heart. What 23 is going to be like, baby? That's why the devil is going to act ugly. But if you're like me, I am determined. I am determined. I'm determined. I'm going to fight my way through the next quarter of this year because I tell you what, it's in the fourth quarter you win the game. Do I have any winners in this house? Do I have any winners out there streaming? This is your winning season. Are you hearing me? This is your winning season. You gotta win now. You prayed long enough. You gotta win. So lift your hands as I pray with you and I just release what God placed in me. I had no idea this service was gonna go this way. But I like flowing with God. As you lift your antennas as high as you can. If you can't, I get it. But as you're streaming, I want you to do the same. Your spiritual antennas. We're going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our hearts and our faith and our determination towards you now. As David declared, I'd look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Father, we know where our help comes from. So this moment in this next quarter of this year, we extend our faith and we believe that you spoke directly to every one of us today. We never expected this, but you did it. And God, thank you that you got us covered the next three months. And you're gonna give us a peace that surpasses all human understanding. Thank you that in this last quarter of 2022, God, we are more than conquerors. Thank you, God, that you're going to release every blessing that you've ordained for us in this quarter. And this year is going to end differently from other years. We are going to have a testimony. It is going to happen quickly. It's 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 going to happen quickly. I hear you saying 72 hours. I hear you saying 72 hours. God, whoever will receive that, God, do it for them. In 72 hours, God, I hear you say 72 hours. You're about to do something in 72 hours, God. So God, I believe and we receive it that it's already done. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. We've got you on the inside of us now. Your blood is flowing through us now. And Father, we believe that all things that you have declared will be manifested in our lives. Bless every woman, bless every man, bless every boy, every girl, bless every person who is streaming right now in the name of Jesus. Let your divine will also be extended to them. Protect them and guide them and let them finish this year strong also. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory that their willingness to even step out from their seat, their willingness to even type on the screen what they are declaring. Father is suggesting that you are going to release a blessing based on their obedience, based on their faith. You told Peter, step out of the boat. It sounded crazy. It was risky. It was scary, but he did it. These people came down, Father, and they're saying, I believe it is my season. I believe it is my breakthrough through I believe it is my moment for a miracle and father we believe it's done and we give you all the praise the honor and the glory for it in Jesus mighty name now listen to me I want you to give God the biggest shout the biggest praise you can come on come on give him the biggest praise you can give him the biggest praise you can it's already done it's already done it's already done It's already done! Woo! Glory to God. Woo! Quickly go back to your seat. Nobody leave. Just go back to your seat. Come on, sing it, sing it, sing it. Come on. Stay right there. Stay right there. God's got something for you. Come on. Yeah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Take your seat quickly, take your seat quickly. I want those of you who are streaming, I want us to do this quickly. Um, I don't know why God did what he did this morning. Nothing that took place in the service from the time I hit the stage to this moment is on the program. <laughs> That's when you know you give God room to operate and work. Never have such a structured church program that you don't allow the Holy Spirit to flow. I have my message that I worked on all night and up to this morning, sent it to my staff. Had it all ready. And God is so funny. I could just hear him up in heaven saying, that ain't gonna do nothing for these people today. I got something planned for them. So, as you can tell the hour, I can't preach. I won't even attempt to preach. Sometimes what preachers do, after God moves, then they go and mess up what he's done. So I'm gonna stay out of the way. Here's what I want everybody to do. We're gonna give our offering and then we're gonna release you. I want, listen to me carefully. Those of you who need to grab a hold of an offering envelope in the pockets of the chairs in front of you quickly, quickly go ahead and get it. Those of you who are streaming, 
I want every person to listen to me. I want you to sow a seed that represents what you're really expecting God to do in the last quarter of this year. In fact, he's going to speak to you and you're going to sense that weakness of what that amount should be. What are you expecting God to do the next three months of this year? You can never buy a miracle, but you can sow a seed to show God how committed you are to building his kingdom and put his word to work. The Bible says to everything there's a season, but also everything evolves over seed time and harvest. It's the seeds you sow that determines the harvest you will have. And I believe that God's already speaking to people who are online and you're given digitally. What's the seed? You know it in your heart. He's been speaking to you. Plus he's confirmed it. You're believing him for some stuff in the next three months. What seed would you apply to that to show God, look, I'm dead serious about this. I'm not missing my God moment. I'm going to show it. I want you to text it to the number 73256. There's the cash app. You can use it. The dollar sign TFC give, by the way, do not put any space between these letters. You can use Zelle. The information is on your screen. You can use PayPal, especially if you're outside the United States. You can give online to the Faith Center, int.org. Some of you just need to pick up the phone right now. Somebody, an operator here at the church is standing by ready to receive your call. Please have your debit or credit card available and continue to give. The rest of you who are here, if you're giving digitally, I want you to grab a hold of your phone. If you're using the envelope, I need some people. I'd ushers, if you can just cease from taking it right now, I know you were doing your job, that's okay. Whatever you have, just hold on to it. But everybody else with a seed in your hand, with, in the offering envelopes, in the pockets of the chair, in front of you, if you know God spoke to you just a moment ago and you sense it in your spirit, that you ought to tap into this uh, flow of God. You want to be in alignment with what God is doing, especially when it even comes to your finances. I want you to grab your seed and I'm not asking you to give it to the ushers. I want you to come and place it at the altar. I want you to trust God. I want you to go out of your way and say, God, I am believing you for something miraculously this end of the quarter of the year. Come on, move quickly while I'm talking so we don't have to take up much time. Whatever, say, God, I'm giving my seed. I'm giving my seed. Those of you are streaming. If you're giving electronically, I get it. Make sure, make sure you do not miss God. Do not miss God. Do not miss God. You can put it anywhere at the altar, anywhere near, there by the stage, anywhere, easier flow. Come on, quickly, quickly. Those of you are giving digitally, it's still on the screen. You can see it, pay attention, give that way. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you just before we dismiss our service, just before. This is a very important part of our service. It takes care of the responsibility of ministry and it gives God a chance to release specific blessings in our lives. Read your Bible. You know, you can say it sounds crazy. Read your Bible and it will tell you, you sow that seed and you give to God, watch what he will do in your life. Don't let anybody force you to give. In fact, the Bible says that you should never give it grudgingly, reluctantly, but with a cheerful heart. If you're expecting God to do something in your life, this is your moment. This is your hour. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. How many of you are giving electronically? Raise your hand. You're giving electronically. God bless you. Come on. Make sure you follow the, the instructions on the screen and you give. What seed is God prompting you to give. Go ahead and give it. Go ahead and give it. I want you guys to sing that same song. He's an intentional God for us to go out on. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Pastor Brian, why don't you come and take care of this and, you know, and Wednesday we'll, uh, tomorrow, by the way, we do have our prayer service online. Hopefully you can stream at seven o'clock. It's only done virtually. And we'll see you Wednesday. We hope you'll be here Wednesday. And we'll see what God is up to next Sunday. Amen. For those of you who probably wanted to hear a word, you're just not in tune with the Holy Spirit. You already got your word. Do I have a witness in the house? God already spoke. Amen. God already spoke in this house. And that's how we do it here at the Faith Center. When God moves, we step out of the way. 
Amen. And I receive a word from the Lord today. Get in alignment. Pastor Brian, go ahead. What a word, what a word. How many of you feel you're in alignment? Or are getting in alignment, amen? Just to reemphasize the announcements uh, that were just mentioned, remember.